Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Happy New Year, excited to be back. I was away for a few weeks traveling with the holidays, but I'm excited to uh, look forward to some projects in the coming few months. One of the things I'm most excited about is I picked up a new camera. I've got a Canon 70D, which is a newer DSLR from them, which I'm really excited because it auto focuses. And that was one of the pr frustrations with my old DSLR, a, a T2i, is that it didn't autofocus, and if you lost the focus, it really, it was just frustrating. It was kind of a drag on the process. I tried using a, a GoPro Hero 3 Plus, and I tried using a, a high definition, you know, handheld camcorder, and the quality just wasn't the same. So really excited to, uh, to get in with this 70D and get some great quality footage. Also picked up a new light from B&H, which I'm really excited about. It's illuminating me right now. Um, I had some old ones from them. This is a little bit of a step up, so we'll see how she does. Um, today, though, I uh, had a job come in from a customer that wants a, um, a large aluminum bracket made, and uh, I've, been, I've been so busy lately with customer projects, which is a good thing, I was actually really surprised at how busy it got leading up to Christmas. Some Christmas-related projects, some year-end stuff. I think some folks just wanted to get stuff done, uh, which is a great thing but um, certainly don't want to neglect uh, you guys. So I uh, talked to the customer and they were fine with uh, publishing a little video here. So I thought I would just go through, we'll take a look at the customer's part, we'll import it into SprutCam, and then we will like, take a look at the fixturing and then we'll go ahead and machine it on the Tormach. Okay, let's import our part and take a look. Let's get it oriented correctly. So I will rotate it around the z-axis to your negative 90 and then set my zero point. Okay, perfect. So, and to give you an idea of size, it's a seven, oops, it's a seven inch wide part and it's about, that's 15 inches long. So it's a large part. Um, you know, we're not at the full envelope of the Tormach, but we're getting close. And we will actually machine this straight on the fixture plate. Uh, it's too wide for the vise. So I have already programmed the, uh, all the cam operations. So let's open that file and we'll walk through them. Okay, here we have it. So let's just take a walk through. We'll start with a roughing water line but we only go down to 375, it's a half inch thick part. 375 does two things. It finishes off these two pockets that are not fully full depth pockets, and it will leave an eighth of an inch around the periphery of the part, which is important for how we're fixturing it. And then I go ahead and trim the inside of these. Sorry, we're roughing with a 3 8 inch end mill, and then we're gonna finish uh, profile the these two pockets, um, ignore the sixth name, that's from the other file that had more of these. Uh, we're going to finish it with a quarter inch end mill. The customer knows that we're not going to have those sharp corners, but rather radius corners, and they're okay with that. We will then finish the center circle, that's a through circle, and so we'll start that cutting up at the 375 depth that we had from our roughing. And then we will go down to, I think I put this one at 51. Yeah, exactly. So we make sure we go through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to spot our holes, the three holes here, the hole here. And then the way I'm going to cut these slots is they're, I think, 200 thou wide. Yeah, 200 thou wide. So I'll use a 3 16 end mill, but I hate plunging like this, so we're gonna drill them first. Um, so we'll spot them, and then on this next op, we'll use a number 25, which is a 1495 uh, diameter drill. It's one that I have already in a chuck, so it, I, I'm fine with that versus chucking up a, a dedicated drill to get closer to the uh, 3 16th size. And then we'll come through and we'll machine them with a 3 16th uh, end mill, which will go quite quickly and, and should look nice. Um, so that's the, mo the majority of the CAD. We're not going to end up machining these two little pockets right here. So they aren't necessary given how small they are in the uh, re requisite uh, fillets. And then what we're going to do is finish 
milling the top and the bottom side. So we'll take a, a roughing pass and then a, and then a uh, final dimension pass all the way down so that that will be totally free and clear. And then finally, we will swap our clamps and then we'll come back and run the separate CAD file with this last op, which will separate the part this way. So the way we're going to cut this part is we're going to have a sheet of stock, which you can see, let's see here, turn off our tool paths. You can see here, we've got excess on both sides and we'll have more than what's shown um, on the x-axis here. We'll have more stock coming off on each end. I did not want that to be um, programmed as stock in Sprout Cam because otherwise it would try to rough mill it. Okay, let's go ahead now and take a look at our simulation. We'll click play. Okay, so we're starting with the roughing water line. Again, 3 8 inch end mill. Uh, we'll take a look at the speeds and feeds. I recall 5100 RPM and about 22 inches a minute and a hundred, I think 125 thou. Yeah, I took it in three depths of cut, so 125 thou per depth of cut. Speed this part up. If I did a lot of these, I would uh, change this. I would rough cut this side out, but um, it's easier for a job like this, in my opinion, to be a little bit conservative. I don't mind if it takes a little bit more time because when I cut it this way, here, hold on, I'll stop it here. Uh, when I cut it this way, by actually machining away this excess material, I don't have to worry as much about chip weld uh, or cutting in slots or the material uh, breaking or jamming into the end mill. Just a personal preference, especially when you're working on a larger part like this, where I hate uh, you always hate to scrap it if you if you mess something up. Um, here, so let's restart that. Okay, so this will come in here. Oops, let's see here. this again okay yeah there we go okay so this will finish up the water line now we'll clean it up with the quarter inch end mill like so same thing here. We're gonna now we're gonna uh, finish out this through hole, and then we will spot our holes. Boom, 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 and so forth. We'll drill these little guys, machine them out, the three sixteenths end mill, and then we will machine away that excess stock on the top and bottom will be our final dimensions on those two sides. And that's it for this program. And then we'll come back and we will move our clamps from that are currently going to be at 9 and 3 and we'll move them to 6 and 12 and then we will machine off the other side here. So let's go over to the mill and take a look at uh, setup here. Okay, I've got the mill vise off and I've got the most majority of the chips off the uh, fixture plate here. Uh, we'll do a closer inspection when we actually go to set up the part. I've cut a rough piece of material and this is 17 inches long so we've got an extra inch on each side for clamping down. It's uh, 10 inches wide, excuse me, it's 8 inches wide. That's the uh, only piece of stock I had. So let me make sure I'm So um, we do have, we'll cut off a little bit on each side there, which is fine. So the question is, how do we fixture this down? I don't want to have it straight on the table. Um, you know, for one thing, I programmed some of my cam operations to go 10 thou below the part. So what we're going to do is just use some 30 thou um, aluminum here. And so what, what will, the easiest way is I'm going to go over to a shear and just cut off a strip um, that'll fit nice and neat underneath it, and then we will clamp our part down. So because I only have a 12-inch uh, shear, we're going to do this a little unconventionally here. We're going to come down, uh, yeah, like so. So we'll come down 
8 inches. And then we'll come down another 5 to 13. This is my little 12-inch uh, Diacro shear, and uh, I love this thing. You'd have to pry it away from my dead hands to get it from me. I keep it on a set of wheels so I can move it around the shop. And apologies for the cramped conditions right here. Um, so we'll slide it up. In fact, I'll, let's uh, zoom in so you can get a closer look. Okay, so here's my first shear line. That's eight inches from the edge. The nice thing about this, it's hard to actually see where your line is marked inside the blade, but we know our next line is five inches further, so I will simply line up my next mark with the five, and just like so. And you know, we'll do the same thing. We'll add another mark here. one at nine and then we'll put that at four okay now the smaller piece we're gonna go like this and this so we need to trim this one down from 12 to eight inches so what I'll do, we want to we want to trim off four, but same thing. I'll put a mark at uh, eight. And there is our little subplate. Okay, let's figure out how we're going to get this thing fixtured up. So here are our two subplate pieces. Those look good. Now I've got this uh, service plate here, or this I've got this fixture plate here, and it has got a rough outline of the mill uh, travel. So what we'll do is look at how we want to line this up. Okay. I was going to use some dowel pins in my dowel pin holes, but I want it to be set back a hair further. So I've got these, and we, this doesn't have to be critical. I just, I'd like to have it uh, roughly parallel with the x-axis. So what we'll do is we will take out one of these set screws from, I think these are half 13 holes. We've got one there and there. And these are, this is what's nice about the autofocus here. Maybe. There we go. These little step ground pins that I use to, uh, for my, in my vice key to line up my vice, but they'll work great for this. I'll put one here. One here. <clears throat> we'll do an accurate, or we'll do a more careful cleanup here in a minute. Just want to get the major chips off. Perfect. I like that. Good. So what we can do, actually probably just slide these underneath, sort of. Good. And you know, you've got to be careful 
depending on the, the quality of the aluminum and, and that can be the uh, a variety of factors. Sometimes um, extrusions this wide have a fair amount of flex or bow in them and sure enough this one does. And how you want to machine that is up to, uh, up to the, you and the job and so forth. But what you do want to be mindful of is, for instance, we're going to see this is higher in the middle. So you want to be careful when you're machining this close to the table that you don't set your Z um, too low and end up machining into your table. So let's now grab a couple of clamps. Okay, we're clamped down snug. We can take our pieces out in the back. Okay, let's uh, pop our CAM program in and take a look at where we are on setup and travels and, and so forth. Okay. Workpiece is clamped down. I ran my indicator over and just sort of got a feel for where we are and I am going to change it up. If you were concerned or suspicious about just having a clamp on each side, I was thinking the same thing and I thought, well, let's see how it clamps up and how it feels. And as I suspected, you're, you're nice and solid on the ends, of course, but you've got a little bit too much play in the middle. Now, Remember, we're not machining much in the middle. We're machining a, a, a couple pockets and uh, areas down here, and then a lot up here. So I actually wonder if you could get away with it. Remember, this isn't going in a uh, you know in a space shuttle. But uh, what I want to do is we've got an opportunity to put a fixture clamp in the middle. So there's a hole about right here. Let's machine that out first. Uh, Dollars to Donut says when we do that, we'll find a clamp uh, or a threaded hole below us that we can then use. And then we will take that, put a clamp in there, and that'll give us a nice midway point for a little bit extra stability. Let's take a look at the cam that I just tweaked. So what I did was, this was our original roughing water line, and in it I added our circle as a restrict zone. And so before that, we will machine the circle. So that's just a roughing water line uh, with the circle set as the job zone. And we will take, again, a 3 8 inch end mill, 5100 RPMs, 22 inches a minute. We will spiral in, and we'll go down to the full depth of cut, 500 thou, and we'll take it in six passes, and we'll take 75% step over, which results in that tool path. Now, I don't want to plunge into this. Um, not always ideal to plunge anyways, even with a spiral but because there's a little bit of uh, lack of rigidity here. So what we'll do even prior to that is we'll take a half inch end mill and we'll just go down to uh, through the part. Now, knowing that of course the uh, drill bit will stop right at the point there. So as we see here, when we simulate, you won't have a full cut through because of the uh, point of the drill bit, but nevertheless should be uh, helpful here. and like so. And the question will be, does going down 500 thou get us through the workpiece? And then obviously I've got to machine out or get rid of the uh, uh, 30 thou aluminum as well so I can expose my threaded hole. But let's start with this. Uh, we will just do the first two operations. So the way I do that is, let's see here, let's recalculate everything. And what we'll do is we'll, let's see here, yeah, we'll turn off everything and then just turn back on the first two and we will post this. Okay, I checked my travel limits to make sure we're all okay there. Let's go ahead and machine our pocket.
okay, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Uh, cut sounded fine. You, you can, you'd know if there was real chatter or if this weren't secured down well enough. So I would probably be comfortable machining the rest of this part without putting a clamp in the, in the circle that we just uh, machined out. But let's go ahead and figure out if we can do that. So I need to cut a little bit deeper to get through our uh, piece of stock and, uh, and then we'll expose our hole. I programmed a simple 2D contour that'll go ahead and go down another 25 thou. The, the uh, material underneath the plate is 30 thou and it actually mics up at a hair over that, maybe 31, 32. And if you look, we didn't quite go all the way through this aluminum. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that with a 25 thou cut, we're not going to come anywhere close to uh, machining into our fixture plate, which I don't want to do, and it's hardened, so it uh, probably wouldn't be pretty at these speeds and feeds. So let's go ahead and see uh, how this works. I machined a few thousandths more and that uh, centerpiece popped right out. I threaded a bolt inside there and I'm just too close for comfort. I've got the machine positioned right now where it's going to be machining that inside uh, pocket. And I'm gonna go ahead and try seeing how this runs without adding a clamp here. Based on how this uh, center circle machine, I think it's going to be fine. If I hear any chatter or I'm not comfortable with it, what I'll do is I'll machine a little clamp that will, uh, will uh, work back here and then loop through that bolt hole there and that way we don't interfere with our uh, cutting path. But I don't think it's worth the hassle based on, again, how that last piece cut. So with that, I've got my new program um, up here, we're going to, I switched up the order. We're going to do the little machining first with the holes, the drilling and the, um, and those little uh, 316 slots. And then we will come back and do the roughing water line, which is the majority of the machining operation. Okay, I've got the first tool in there to spot our drill holes. Let's rock and roll.
Okay, that's uh, part is done. So now let's move our clamps over and we will then finish machining the edges. You can see we're right on the cusp of the bottom of the material. We've got a little bit of uh, sticking up, but that'll come right off with the deburring tool. No problem at all. So I think I'm happy with all that. Okay, I fiddle around with the clamp positions for a few minutes and I like what I've got. Um, so I've got two here, two back here. You don't need that much clamping uh, pressure, but because uh, of how wide the part is, I wasn't willing to have just one in the middle, uh, given that we're cutting on each end. So I've got those secured down. Now let's take off our other clamps. So I've got these secured down. The only one, see here, yeah, this one back here, sort of a no-no. You don't want to have the bolt for the clamp more than halfway back. You want it in the front half, to, that forces the clamping pressure uh, on the front. Right now we're really using the back part as a lever and clamping more on the block below. But this will be okay for, for this part. Um, so we can now take our... Ooh, that was on there pretty good. Okay. Make sure everything feels good. Everything looks good, so let's go ahead and take the clamps off. Okay, now let's see if I can get my autofocus to work here. Perfect. So we pop through, which is important. Uh, we need to do a little bit of edge cleanup, but that is easy with the deburring tool. And then I've got my spots. I'm going to just drill these holes out on the drill press. I didn't drill them in the program here because I didn't want to... Um, I couldn't drill all the way through, obviously, given how short the subplate was, and I didn't want to drill the holes twice, so no big deal there. And we didn't pop through on our table, which is good. I have been deburring parts for years, and uh, for, for whatever reason, it's almost comical, I have cut myself numerous times in the past few months. Um, again, sort of never having had real problems with it before, so um, that's obviously, you know, not safe, and it can be uh, annoying or even... Um, you know, incapacitating to have a bad cut. So um, I started wearing a glove, which you know doesn't really hurt anything and, and helps a ton. Get a little edge flat out here. I'm happy with that. Let's drill some holes. Okay, I've got the uh, drill set up here, a little clamp here, and we will drill out the three bottom holes first. Increase the speed a little here. Okay, so that is on uh, 620 RPMs. We were down at only uh, 200 there at the beginning. There. Next one is three eighths, but we're going to pilot it just so we have a, don't drill a center out with the uh, same drill bit. All right, here is the finished part, ready to ship off to the customer. 
Hope you've enjoyed the video showing Sprut Cam, then showing how we set it up on the mill, and then how we machined it on the PCNC 1100. Uh, looking forward to 2014. I certainly wish everyone a happy new year and many good things to come. Uh, that's all though for today, folks. So again, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor and comment below or like the video. Otherwise, see you soon. Thanks, folks.